Hello everyone, welcome back to the table. Today we are looking at the Shield On, Knives, and Polion. Now, very first thing I'm going to mention is that all of the Shield On knives I own were provided to me by the manufacturer for the purpose of making these videos. But they have no idea what I'm going to say about these knives, and they don't see these videos until they are uploaded. So with that out of the way, let's check out the last of my four Shield On knives that were sent in. This is the Empoleon. So second thing I need to get out of the way, for those of you who are really observant, this knife company seems to have a slight infatuation with Pokemon, of all things. So the names Shieldon, Empoleon, Barrascuda, the Bulbasaur, all of these are in fact names of Pokemon. I really do need to ask their rep, Mr. Stephen Liu, about this because I, for one, am curious about the story behind it. I wish I knew what, what it was about. But here we have the Empoleon, named for a rather giant bird Pokemon. But as a knife, I did save the best for last. So this is the most subdued design I have received from Shield On, but it has some really nice clean lines with a little bit of visual flair to break things up and try to make it stand out from the rest of the crowd. First though, let's take a look at these G10 handles. The overall profile of the knife is nice and slim, and the sculpted G10 here is smooth and contoured. Uh, the edges of the G10 have this rock-like texture patterned onto it, which kind of breaks up what otherwise might be a plain handle. That's good. Uh, the pivot on this knife is a standard T8 bit, uh, but around the pivot screw, we can see there's a collar, and it has the same gray titanium coating here that we're going to see on the blade in just a minute. It does provide for kind of a nice contrast and transition between the black G10 handle and the satin polished pivot screw. So very low key classy here. Downside here though, is that you will notice that on both sides of the pivot, they have a T8 Torx head. And so that means if you try to tighten or to disassemble this knife, the pivot just wants to spin in place and it's gonna make it hard for you. So in order to take down the knife, you need two T8 Torx bits, one to hold the screw in place and one to screw the other side out. So it's somewhat cumbersome and this problem could be easily fixed with the use of a D-shaped pivot pin. So no excuse in 2021 for knives to not use a D-shaped pivot pin. That's bad. Now on the reverse side of the knife, we see more of the same and we can check out the pocket clip. So the pocket clip is non-reversible. We have tip up right hand side carry only. And it's in the same style that we have seen in our other shield on knives so far. The clip is not really outlandish. It's not crazy looking, but it's also not deep carry and a fair amount of the handle will stick out of your pocket. That's bad. And so that's for good or for bad. And that's generally a personal preference, whether you like that or not. So take that for what you will. Lastly, here on the handle, we have a nice wide lanyard hole, which should easily accommodate paracord with no problem. That's good. All of the edges of the knife, smooth and rounded, gives the knife a nice classy look. But of course, let's take a look at the knife with the blade open. This is a standard flipper with the blade running on bearings, so it has a very smooth operation. The detent is just right, so the opening action is super crisp and I have had zero issues with the blade failing to deploy. On the flipper tab itself, we have a little bit of jimping on it, um, but the action here is good enough, I don't even think the jimping is really needed. So once you get past that detent, the blade just flies open effortlessly. And looking at the blade itself, we have a D2 blade, three and a half inches long. It has a nice slim profile, and the overall thin profile of the knife reminds me of many of the uh, Quaken-esque style knives, I guess you could call them, uh, that have been popular in the last couple of years. So the blade also has this gray titanium nitride coating. And on the show side of the blade here, we can of course see the Shield On logo. And right next to that, we see the blade steel is marked as D2 steel. On the reverse side of the blade, we have the model name, the Empoleon. And right underneath that, the Shield On knife designer who goes by the name of Django. And also very small, but near the handle, we can see the item number of this knife. And on this one, it looks kind of obscured a little bit, a little bit worn away, um, but that is also there on the blade. 
But the standout feature on this knife that really makes it, in my opinion, the best of the four shield on knives I have received is the action itself. It's simply really enjoyable to flip. Uh, the knife has a fall shut action, and so when the blade is closed, it is almost entirely contained by the handle, as you can see, which makes the profile of the overall knife that much slimmer, that much easier to carry. So while the knife is closed, let's take a look at the centering on the blade. And as I've noticed, knives that run on bearings typically have pretty good centering, and that is the case with the Empoleon as well. And this is a liner lock, and you can also see the lock up on the blade, so everything looks good there. While the knife is open, uh, check out the liners. The liners on the knife also have that same gray titanium coating as the rest of the steel. And taking a look inside the liners, you can see there are actually holes drilled out, and that, that was put in there for weight reduction. That's good. So for a knife with a three and a half inch blade and about eight inches of overall length, it weighs in at 3.14 ounces, which is actually a little less than the advertised weight of 3.35 ounces. Either way, it's good. <laughs> so the Shield On Empoleon checks off a lot of boxes that would make this really the ideal everyday carry knife, EDC knife. And this knife seems to be readily available on a few web different websites at around the $50 price point. So at that price, I think it's really compelling and really hard to not recommend this knife. You know, and of course, like I also mentioned in my earlier videos, these Shield On knives, they all come with this really nice little nylon belt sheath. And so it's a pretty good quality. It has a button snap on the loop and Velcro closure. Uh, this loop is uh, Molly compatible. So these sheaths have a bit more use, in my opinion, than your standard, you know, zipper pouch that tends to come with a lot of Chinese knives these days. But before we're done, let's make some quick size comparisons with some other popular EDC knives that I just happen to have. And this is, can help give you an idea of the size of the Empoleon. So we're gonna take a look today at the Spyderco Endura, the Spyderco Delica, the Kershaw Blur, as well as the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. So stay tuned, let's check those out. Can I go now? And of course, while we're doing some comparisons, we are also going to take a look at the Shield On family all together here. So none of them are terrible, I will say that right up front but I do think the Empoleon is the best of the bunch. Personally, I also love the look of the Bulbasaur with its crazy colors and the really wild shape. Um, personally though, I also would have never really taken a second glance to the Barracuda and the Boa, but they, they do have their strengths. And to be honest, everything that I'm saying is really just a matter of taste. So what I like isn't necessarily what you're gonna like. But go ahead, let me know what you think about all these knives in the comments below. I would really love to hear your thoughts. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.